Hello, welcome to Painting with Jasmine Rempelart. I'm Jasmine and today I want to play with watercolors and uh, white gel pen. So I'm wanting to create um, a little design with butterflies. Um, I did a design with leaves and patterns using the white gel pen. And now I want to translate that into butterflies. So to start, um, I'll share the supplies I'm using. I'll do a little sketch and then we'll begin applying the color. So if you're wanting to join me to do this, well, all I have here is um, a watercolor pad. It's actually um, an artist loft watercolor pad. Let's see, artist loft level two and it's six inch by nine inch, 140 pounds. Um, I'm using this because I'm just playing and having fun today. I've not done this before. You can use any kind of watercolor paper you like for this. And of course, any size. Um, I have here ready to go a graphite pencil. Um, I think it's a B. It's a 2B and a gummy eraser. For my sketch, I've got um, color swatches ready. I'm going to be using Prussian blue. I'm going to use um, permanent rose and I'll mix them together to get a nice purple. Again, Prussian blue, this is quinacridone gold and I'll mix them together to get this gorgeous green. And here I put a little bit of Payne's Gray and beside it, I put a new color that I've just, just bought called um, Moon Glow by Daniel Smith. And so I think that I'll aim to use the Moon Glow and play with that. I'm using uh, mostly Winsor Newton watercolor paints, professional level, except for the Daniel Smith that I just told you about, the Moon Glow. I have them ready here to the side. You can use student level paints, you can use professional level paints, any kind of watercolor paints you want. I tend to like to use the professional level because the effects are, um, I just like them better. However, when I first started watercolor, which was not so long ago, I used Cotman's Windsor Newton, Windsor Newton Cotman's student level paints with plenty of great success. So don't feel you have to have professional paints. Um, I have some brushes here. Here I have a number four round silver, black velvet, and the number eight in the same brand. I've got a rigger brush simply for signing and for adding um, antennae. And then I have uh, a white gel pen. I just got this from Amazon, Jelly Roll 10. It's going okay. It's It shows up best if you have very dark background, which I'm planning to do. I also have paper towel ready to go and some water. Okay, let's get ready for the sketch. I've actually already faintly sketched on what I'm wanting here, and I'll just go over my lines. I'm going to create, um, I created the body of the butterfly, the head, the thorax, the abdomen. You could just very simply do uh, like an oval. It doesn't have to be as complicated as doing each part. Then I reached up and I'm doing um, a curve, like a frown, bringing it around into the center. And what I do on one side, I'm going to do my best to repeat on the other. However, it definitely won't look exactly alike. And I'm totally fine with that. On this side, I did a teardrop shape coming back up to that thorax. Another teardrop shape coming back up. There, first butterfly done. 
Here's the second one, little head, little thorax, and the abdomen, kind of a frown curve around and in. Same thing, this one's going to go underneath this wing, around and in again. But I will erase where it goes in. It's going to look like one is flying closer than the other. All right. Um, here I did something like so. Curve down into like a little tip and then bringing it back up. Uh, last one is going to be facing this way. The wing having this is basically a teardrop shape wing. And these I did more like a leaf shape, quite elongated. All right, so there is my design and it's looking quite, um, I'm just wanting to move my camera up a little bit here. You could see that better. Um, it's quite dark right now. The graphite is too dark. So I'm going to, I just did that for your sake. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift off a lot of that graphite. Watercolors are transparent. You can see through them, so I really don't want to see these strong lines. However, that being said, my the color that I'm going to... Uh, everything's falling apart today. Okay. The color that I'm going to put inside these uh, wings is actually going to be quite dark, so I might not see them anyway. All right, here comes the fun. Let's get going. I'm picking up my number eight round and I'm going to fill in this wing with water. I'm wanting the wing saturated but not so wet that there's puddles, just wet enough that there's a nice sheen or shine. Great. And let's go straight into that lovely Prussian blue and start off with that pure color. Let it bleed in to this wing. Gorgeous. All right. Now let's go into the permanent rose. nice and dark and let's just tap that in and blend it together a little bit right on the paper and we've got a bit of blue a bit of purple and some pink a very harmonious looking wing gorgeous i don't think i need to change that at all let's do the same thing in the other wing Starting with my water so that I can have that wet on wet look. I am working, putting the water in, following my design, the inside of the shape of that wing, and basically cutting it off where, making a curve where that other wing will be. That will give an illusion of some depth overlapping. OK, 
Okay, I want it wet enough that the color will bleed and it won't dry out too quickly. So that's looking nice and wet. All right, back into that gorgeous Prussian blue, touching it into the center and letting that bleed out. Nice. Right. Heading into the beautiful um, permanent rose. Tapping that in, letting it blend a little bit with the blue to create that beautiful violet and just spreading it out. I'm being mindful that I want rich dark hues, dark value, so that the gel pen that I put on top really shows. Okay. Being a little bit careful around this edge. Nice, that looks good. Let's let that dry and go into another wing. So let's do this teardrop shape with water. Filling it in. Watching for that overlap curve here. I really hope you give this a try. This is something that um, would be great for beginners if you're just stepping out into watercolor. The trickiest part really is to draw the butterflies, but um, your butterflies can look like your butterflies. They don't have to look just like mine. And uh, you could trace some butterflies as well. Any kind will do. Gorgeous. I just love the way that bleeds out. All right, let's add um, another color in there. I'm going to reach for this um, quinacridone gold, which is just a beautiful, beautiful color. And I'm going to mix it straight into that Prussian blue and get this lovely green. That's quite a warm green right now. It's got a lot of the quinacridone in it, a lot of the gold color. And again, just blend them together a bit. Using the tip of my brush here to draw a bit of the wing, I'm going outside my pencil lines quite by accident. My paper's got a lot of ridges, so I'm working with that paper. <laughs> Let's do some dots in there. Okay, that looks good. Take two. Filling that in with the water. I think what I'll do is finish this wing and then put the rest of the application of the wings onto time lapse. Um, just the Prussian blue right now. Tap, tap, watching it bleed. Happy moment. I just, this makes me so happy watching this color. This is why I love watercolor. Just watching it run, do its magic, do its thing. Working around the ridges of this paper. Okay, good. Let's get this green mix. Add some more of the gold into it. Ooh, that's quite light. That's better. Yeah, bringing that into the top of the wing. Hello, beautiful. These butterflies are going to look amazing. I'm planning to do this as a practice and then turn them into butterfly bookmarks 
for my students, my grade two students. The bookmarks become incentives for reading for them, little rewards for reading goals that they accomplish. Okay, beautiful. Let's let that settle. And for my top butterfly, hmm, I think what I will do is definitely use a lot of that Prussian blue and I might actually play with that um, moon glow up in there. I'm going to put that on time lapse now. Well, let's do the last butterfly wing in real time. Applying the, applying the water. Bringing it into my teardrop shape. Reaching for the moon glow. Tapping it into the top of the wing, letting it bleed down. All right, there it's almost near the bottom. So now I'll clean my brush and I'll get some of that Prussian blue and apply this to the bottom of the teardrop shape. And let them combine a little. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to get my number two brush. Remember, oh, nope, number four round. And I'm just going to put in a couple of bodies using colors that are in the wing. So for the center one, we've got some Prussian blue. And I'll just use that for now. There's the head thorax. Right now I'm just doing um, wet on dry. This um, paintbrush is lovely. It has a great um, tip to it so I can achieve fairly decent control. Okay, now I'll tap in some of the rows, a few areas, implying some shadow or some pattern. All right, let's do the same here. Prussian blue, head. Thorax, abdomen, just pulling down on my brush and filling in some of that color with the tip of my brush. And picking up a little bit of that green, tapping it here and there. Good. And I'll just use the moon glow, which actually is quite marvelous. It seems to have a, 
it seems to have a warm pink behind it within the color. Color granulates and then you see a gray and a and a warm pink. It almost it's almost metallic looking in some ways. All right, there's the three body parts. And a little bit of the blue. Good. Now let's get my liner rigger brush and hmm, I'm wondering. I think what I will do is use the same colors that I used. Keep it simple for the um, the body. So for the top one, I've got um, Moon Glow, and I'm just going to use my liner brush and just pull outwards. Whoa, that actually was super thick. I don't love that. So let's see if I can pick it up. Mm, not so much with this paper. This is not... So it's, let's now rub water. That wasn't quite what I was expecting. Well, I've cleaned up some of it. It's quite all right. This is just a practice. So I'm, I'm okay with a mistake. But what I find interesting is as I'm lifting this uh, color, I can see what I saw before. There is a pink left behind. Okay, let's let that dry. And um, in the end, it'll be hardly noticeable. I think what I'm going to do is use um, a pen. And I'm going to draw these. That feels better to me. Of course, I could um, use a smaller brush. Here's um, a zero. Maybe I'll do that for the top of the antennae. The little, little marks up there. The moon glow marks. And here I'll use Prussian blue with this number zero silver brush. There we go. And again, Prussian blue. Nice. Great. Okay. Now what needs to happen is I need this to dry and then I'm going to add some pattern. So let's let it dry. Okay, now's the time to create some patterns on these wings. Whatever I do on one side, I'll repeat on the other. And this is just for fun and for playing. I don't actually have idea an idea ahead of time. I'll use these patterns for references.
pretty. Okay, let's move into this one. Try something a little different. Kind of am following along the color changes I see here. different here. That's okay. Not going to stress about it. Nice. Do the same up here. Now, of course, if you're doing this, you yours is going to look different than mine. I'm sure you'll find patterns, um, shapes within your own colors and have your own pattern ideas. Nevertheless, um, hopefully, I've been able to inspire you to try this. It is definitely relaxing and quite fun. And the end result is just so very pretty. I guess the sky's the limit too in what kind of shapes you can do. Butterfly shapes, leaf shapes, elephant shapes, so many. Let's do something different up top than I did down there. Whale shapes, cat shapes. Perhaps you can leave me a comment and tell me another shape. Other shape ideas that will look amazing with patterns inside. I started playing with patterns because I teach grade two and one of the out art comes for um, grade two curriculum in British Columbia is that the students learn to work with rhythm and pattern repetition and so I started playing more at home so that I can offer a little more to them in the classroom. I'm actually on a medical leave right now. I had surgery uh, about two weeks ago so when I get back, I'll have lots of fun ideas to share with them. And in fact, this uh, will be one. I'm going to buy enough gel pens to share with the students. All right, I think I'll do my last one on time lapse. And there it is. How pretty. All right, for my last touch, I'm going to get my watercolor ready and I'm just going to do some splatters. Tapping on, oh, I need it a little more wet. My Prussian blue 
in my number four brush. And getting some of this pink, the permanent rose, create more of a purple, splatter on a bit of purple. And then some of that straight pink, nice and wet. Is the look of some movement a little bit celebratory and now my rigger brush and I'm going to sign this with that purple blue color JR Jasmine Rempel thank you so much for joining me today if you have enjoyed this and been inspired by it please Put a like on my video. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Happy creating. Bye for now.